could have so many elements of like pushing power, ganking power, roaming ganking Prepare power. It battle. could be safe lane farming. It could be everything you want out of both drafts. Yeah, I guess we really just have to wait and see. What we do know for sure is DK is going to be running some sort of defensive lane. I think it's going to be quite difficult to go offensive anti-mage, beastmaster, shadow shaman. So that's that's the one that will scratch off the list right from the get-go. But it's a return of the burning anti-mage. We haven't seen this for quite a while. The last one that I really remember was when DK took down Alliance back in TI3. That was the first loss that Alliance had in the entire tournament on the hands of the, 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 the anti-mage. I think this really, this game's gonna come down to the first 15 to 20 minutes, whether DK could essentially play four versus five and how much room Burning's gonna have. If Burning's gonna show up to fight with the Battle Fury and Manta style, game's over. But uh, if, if VG Gaming could roll down five or six towers before then, then we're gonna have a very, very interesting mid game. Just gonna point out too, Burning already ahead in the farm. Got one Treant. So uh, he's gone a long way out. The Treant was scouting out most of DK moving into their jungle area. Yeah, I'm not quite sure I want to throw away the potential for the aggro tri lane. I know Ice Ice Ice, uh, last time I saw him, I saw him play this on dying off lane, they ended up destroying their opposition, but that was when they're playing Radiant side, the they could run an begins. easy aggressive lane. But with Latin also as this Beastmaster, he can easily move around. Obviously, he's got a really big job right now not to die to 100 TK. Then again, he might be able to even kill him off. He's still got Axis available. And with Boots first, he's got the movement speed over ROTK. Support has to rotate in here from Fenrir. There goes your Axis. ROTK, 63 life points. The Illusions will continue the battle down here. But this is not the way ROTK wanted to start this dual offlane. He's already had to burn the south 20 seconds into the game. The thing about Beastmaster is that his base stat is so, so good. He has a lot of high base armor, high base damage. Normally, that's why he's able to actually go mid as a melee hero. But hey, man, as a support, he's just cutting down other supports. Very much so reminds me of a tree in support in that sense. But for now, it is going to be offensive tri lane. They want to tackle burning. They want to make sure that he doesn't get the room and space that he needs to farm. And how will DK respond? That's the question. Yeah, I'm interested to see too. And if they're, if they're happy with the other lanes, can we just, before the top lane is going to erupt, uh, talk about the bottom lane. How is Ice 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 meant to go up here against Super? One steals life points, the other steals damage. Who's meant to be coming out on top here? I think the guy that steals damage is a little bit uh, better off in the later stage. For now, it's Ice 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 kind of bullying him around at level one. Once, especially with Super gets his boots, he should be able to actually zone out Ice Ice Ice. Uh, burning? <laughs> Sorry, he's being really over aggressive, knowing FY as well as Fenrir are dewarding inside of his own jungle. Dewarding the, the first uh -oh. ward. Now, disruption. There will be the split earth, and the timing will be right. Burning, he does have blink available, but he's not flying. anymore. Oh no! Not he anymore! Got burnt off. This will be burning dead. Just the basic right clicks will be enough. Proper being in just in case. Silo wasting a little bit of time coming up for that one, but still the first blood goes away of VG Gaming. I'm actually very surprised that Burning level up his Mana Break. Normally when you play against a Shadow Demon, especially that one that's in your lane, you don't level up Mana Break for that reason alone. Like, especially early in the game, a couple swipes, you're out of the Mana and you're dead. Yep. And because of that now, first blood being fed over to VG Gaming. The supports of VG Gaming too. This SD is track. They're going to have to keep their rotations going and keep the pressure up, but they're getting the levels now that allow them to do so. You've even got the track just so soaking up a couple of extra levels being on the lane here with ROTK. And SD's coming in. Well, there's an easy stun on burning. Uh, but the fact you've got Fenrir almost up, up to get the catcher, you're going to get a lot more damage on heroes. And if there's anyone else, actually, Ice Ice Ice, he comes top lane. There goes your tombstone. Disruption might be on burning, and the, and the sun might hit, but the shackles over on Fenrir. He's going to go down. Really, really good movement from DK. Ice, 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 just teleport top and hit there. Basically saying, you know, we know you're going to come on and, on burning and try to get a kill. And they had Beastmaster swapping on the bottom lane as a result. So looks like we're going to see a big divergence of who's going to be the farmer, who's going to be support this game. Ice, 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 let's see how well he can support. Yeah, this is... Unless they, they swap back. Th this is not really where Ice, ice, ice wanted to be here, though. Like, it's, it's a really, really bad position for him. He's not going to have a great, any great pulls because everything's basically blocked up anyway. They're going to pull down, but MMY needs to also soak up this experience. And without the basic pull to grab the creep wave down, they've got to do these riskier kind of... It's a single pull down, which gives more momentum to the creep wave of DK, which means more farm over towards ROTK. Yeah, also earlier, I think it was uh, DK that dropped a couple of wards to de-ward the pull camp. Yes. And it looks like they weren't able to finish the de-ward properly. They, so. they, they put a sentry ward just over here on the side, trying to uh, basically de-ward this one. As you can see, they got halfway through it, and then uh, VG Gaming came over. That was the first movement from the SD track just before burning went down. 
Well, as the lane settled down, I mean, the, the thing that's really uh, impressing me is that Super is farming out of control. Ten denies here. Granted that he was mostly denying against melee heroes, but controlling the lane and really, at a certain point, you have to send a gank party as Super because the mech's going to come up very, very soon. The Aghanim is going to come soon after that. But maybe the game's not really about Super. Maybe it's about that trialing. It's about that Pugna getting a lot of experience, leveling his wards up, and really leading the push for his team. Maybe you're right. Maybe it, maybe it is just still going to be Super, though. Uh, he's got so much farm up his sleeve, and there's no one to contest him at the moment. Now, Ice 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 managed to do himself a haste rate. He gets disrupted up instantly. The frag stuff will follow directly after. Ice 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 can still move pretty quickly, so if they want to chase down FY here, burning, he actually can't come to fight because he's got no mana right now. So Ice 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 can just decay and try and force ROTK as well as FY back a little bit further, being a nuisance. The one big thing for DK is they finally got rid of that Observer and Sentry Ward combination the VG Gaming had running, so they've got their pull available. And you see them straight away trying to a pull through, actually missing it. They didn't keep the aggro there. Yeah, the pull is so important for the DK supports. Uh, it used to be Beastmaster Undying, or Beastmaster and Shadow Shaman, now it's Undying Shadow Shaman. And both of those supports need a ton of levels to, to be effective during the mid game. ROTK is running right next to Ice Ice Ice. Here comes the Jigsaw, but there's no lockdown. ROTK just walks himself out of there. Long range at the shot. Not going to be a shackle gonna shackle on Fisher. And they're going to try to get that kill. Spurs going to come down here. And everybody's on the retreat. It's going to be Burning in. Mage. Out of mana. He's Anti Mage locked. dead. They're gonna keep moving up, that eating damage, Radiance hitting into Ice Ice Ice, ice. disruption, still on cooldown, obviously, but the problem opens up, and little Shrak's done! It's just on the edge of the split earth. What a TP coming up from dying. Silar. Really winning that fight, and I just call them Burning Mage for whatever reason. Dyer's it works, he's now blended fortified. himself. The top tower is being forced out, and this is when you start to see high points up in Edict. So it wasn't Dyer's like Mad was looking for uh, to see attack. the high points up in the Lightning. They're using this now just to burn through everything around FY, including the Tier 1 tower. With the tree and army from Sila, it's very easy to push in. Not to mention that Nether Blast up to level 3 from Pogna. And again, it kind of looked like DK were say, saying, OK, we'll, we'll force the initiation out. Maybe we could find a kill on the core. We can't do it. Instantly shackle up on the SD and try and bring him down. But they came so close towards the tier one tower when the TP support came in, it came in quick. Yeah, and that burst of gold is really necessary for Vichy because all of the items are starting to pile in. I imagine Silar is going to be going for a Necro book first as he generally always does. It looks like ROTK is going to be the mech builder for the team, so that's going to free up Super with this Top accelerated lane. They're going to go again, there's disruption, and the one gets the follow-up stun, and then just an easy blast, but it's not yeah. enough damage yet. Silar keeping him alive, he drops the tombstone, but there's three points of poison, nice, 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 survives through it, and Shadow Shaman is the man to get the kill. Again, Fenrir being the collateral oh, damage. Burning. They're going to cut them off in the back line here. Burning does not have his ultimate yet, but he should be able to do a ton of right click. And why? Misses on the stun. That means the shot can go to work. But Sila going to TP in to help out. Wrath of Nature coming off cooldown. They need to keep that vision up if they want to tag out MMY there. Dyer's middle but tower it won't be possible attack. at the end of the day. Yeah, Fenrir actually chased quite deep. Undying has a very similar aspect like Bristleback. When he's low health, you think you're going to get the kill, but his health bar is actually Hi, quite big. Hi, Sila. Burning. Take as much mana away from this guy as he possibly can. But he's actually holding on to his points. Actually, I say holding on to his points. He's actually uh, got a point up in stats. Yeah, that's that's the good old burning build. You just um, max your stats and tank it up. He's really the first player that has uh, popularized it in the pro scene. How's Mushi doing? I saw him take it. He took out a quad ancient stack at one point. Like, while well, everything is going up on the map, I we're, we're still good. like Mushi going underneath the radar. And soon when he actually gets his BTs, he'll be flying right into the radar. And he's only like another 400 gold away from getting there. Yeah, I mean, there was so much attention being focused on the top lane against Burning, but perhaps Mushi is really the beast that's going to take them into the mid game. Because yeah. once Mushi gets his BOTs, it's going to be Radiant's that much harder to start pushing. Attack. And he's going to get it after these stacks. Yep. It means ST and Lefranc, they can't Dying really roam across the map anymore. The second there's a hawk, you're going to have the, uh, the Tinker come in and help him out. And Sila, it's like VG Gaming know this. They're trying to add as much pressure and get as much advantage before the BT Dying's Tinker comes online. And they're going to deal with the level 4 march, the machines just being spammed out time and time again. Now, he's walking back to base at the moment. So Mushi, he's going to pick up his BTs now. And Ice 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 looks like he's tasked with defending here on the front lines. He may have to drop the tombstone if they want to hold this tier one tower. 
Right now, there's the BT support Dyer's coming in. Still a little bit further back. The tower will go down. The nice size size. He's still very close. And RTK, same thing can be said for him. The Hawk sitting over the tree lines. He's got perfect vision of where RTK is. The rocket's going down to Super as well as RTK. But with all five players here for VG Gaming, I don't think DK want a bar of it. Not unless they can catch someone out of position. They let Burning do the farming in the meantime. Yeah, I wonder how VG Gaming will now take the game because you could still five man and push, but it's going to be really, really slow push attack. compared to the previous speed of pushing. Oh, so you gotta be careful. He's actually running very aggressive. Ooh, what's he doing up this far? Wall from behind him. And then the Undying Tombstone. RT gone. RTK is gone. He had a haste rune, so he thought he could come in, harass, and leave, but pretty a costly kill. I think the most important thing right now for Vici Gaming is actually get levels. If you look at over to ROTK, for example, he's level 5. You ideally want to at least have that max blast. Um, in this game, you want to max Nether Ward as well. Having that ward down, especially against Tinker, just keep zapping him, draining his mana a little bit passively is going to be the key. But for now, it's attack. actually DK now striking on the tier 1 bottom. They mop up the creep wave and their creep wave continues to push out. Mushi, he just hides inside the tree lane. He's got to be a little bit careful at the moment, just because he doesn't have a blink dagger or four staff available, so he's still susceptible to the ganks here of Vici Gaming. But Vici FY, Gaming. they're Dyer's coming up. The smoke's going to be revealed. He's, Lanham, he's actually inside the pit. The poison will come top. over and make this little bit of help. Neverborn, SD Disruption, and now Roshan has been aggro. Kills off Lanham's wall, and maybe Tinker with Master Machines can help out a little bit. Still, un we knew that Lanham was going to go down, but I think guys, he's in the middle of the entire engagement. Drops the tomb, so he's already got some nice decay damage out. And Burning getting done up there by FY and RTK drain the life out of him. Mana Break able to stop it off, but then Super comes in with the Plasma Field. Return kill to the Anti Mage. And Ice 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 lifting himself away as Sila TP's in very, very aggressively to go on Ice Ice Ice. He's got Kay available oh. again. The Sprout working against him. Decay, he's up to 1200 life points. It's not enough to keep him alive, though. Super will take a double kill here. And Sila, Mr. 682 life points, is going back to base. Before that fight actually happened, Vici gave me smoke right under a DK war. So DK knew the fight was coming, and they, to be honest, I think they took a fair, fairly poor fight. I think they were expecting a lot more damage out of that Undying Tombstone, but Radiance I think Undying Tombstone, you really attack. need a little bit more lockdown to make it truly effective. You need a big slow, you need a big stun, and they really didn't have anything of that. Now, AM is uh, slowly getting his farm up, but we're not going to see anything like a 14-minute battle fear, which is really the standard timing in these pro games. Burning, he's only up to treads in 500 gold, but I think DK is still Lanham. stabilized. He's looking for a roar right now. There was smoking up coming from MMY as well as Lanham and Super. He's got that movement speed on everybody at the moment. Super is so tanky. Look at him. He's up to 1,500 gold. They can roar him, but I think he'll be fine. Well, unless I can catch him in, in like a double wave from Master Machines. Yeah. You might be right. I think DK, despite having their AM very underfarmed, they're absolutely fine, thanks to the fact that Mushi's got such a quick BTs, and now he's already got Blink. He's got double bottle. No, one of them is Lambs. I guess he's uh, being the quick he's delivery. Radiant's he's being the courier. Yeah. He's being attack. the courier. I mean, mine as well. Yeah. Oh yeah, drag it out for the Beastmaster. That means he can also rotate, and he can leave Beastmaster now to control up the runes. It doesn't always have to be like Tinker, and it definitely won't be the Annie Mage. So Beastmaster's primary job, making sure there's no buff-ups coming the way of the Razor or the Prophet. Rather difficult job, but with the Beastmaster, Hawk, as well as Boar, he should be able to do it. While it uh, looks like Ice Ice Ice's job is just to make sure these stacks continue. That's going to be a triple Ancient stack. And we kind of got to remember about all of this. Oh, oh MMY. Super is going in. Oh, yes, he turns on the ulti for this one. Drops down TP himself in. Ice 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 drops the Tombstone, goes with the Decay. He won't be going after a 105 plus damage Super. I wonder if they're going to try to push off of Top this. lane, they're going to have a crack at ROTK. Lanham's going to get himself in range for the raw, though, before Anthony can really get to work. Remember, they've only got the extra stone coming out from Burning, so there goes your raw. Profit Ultimate also bouncing around. A lot of damage to Lanham, ROTK. There's your mana break. SD Disruption, just defensively. And now they're going to TP out of here. Lanham, is he going to get out? He's out to home. And so is Burning. Both back out to safety after they realize they are a little bit too deep. To me, that's a DK victory. They traded a couple of TPs, but they're, pl they're playing with a more mobile lineup. It may not be that great, man. MMY is about to die here in the middle lane. There's a haste screen over on Super. Oh, you, can't, you can't outrun that. He'll just stick with MMY to the end. Even with the extra sprout, holds them together for a ceremonial death. I like how Vichy Gaming is focus so, focusing so much on MMY. The fact that they keep on delaying his level Dyer's 6 is huge for the Roshan fortified. fights that are coming up. Tier 1 in the mid lane is going to be under siege as well. Whenever Vichy Gaming takes a successful fight or small engagement, they can push down these outer towers, and they're doing just that. DK, 
Oh, they beat them again. Red. Here comes the Dream Zone. They really want to fight under this T1, and that tier one's dropping quite fast. Looks like it's going to hold at least for now. I like the fake TP coming out from Mushi at the very, very start of that. But after getting off a, uh, a double decay, VG Gaming would be very, very careful about their life points because it could be very deceptive. You have all these, uh, all these life points items, like having a point boost or an ogre club, and then you still sit there going, why have I only got 1,500 life points? And the longer the fight continues, the bigger you make the undying and the worse you get. A huge item picked up on Silar. The fact that he's got Orchid means a very reliable way to kank that anti-mage. More... Ooh, ooh. <laughs> <laughs> Why is everyone got a Midas? <laughs> hear me out. Okay, I'll hear you. I'll hear you. We are 14 minutes in. I, I'll have to stop you. Uh, land on bottom lane. The <laughs> Roth's gonna go on Silar. And in comes the Tinker oh, as well. Yeah. And he just ensures the last hit. Burning is his ultimate, but Mushi gets the kill. And more supports coming towards that mid lane. ROTK, man, one Nether Blast, and he's got this tower dead to rights. One more. No, they're trying to deny. Oh, they're gonna get it off. Shaman stops them. The Mushi Master Machines means even with laser damage from the plasma field, it has to stop there. But yeah, I want to hear you. Minus. So one of the things that Matt pointed out during the draft is that ROTK is taking a huge risk by drafting the Pugna as the last, last pick. Essentially, if you don't really get a huge lead off in 20 minutes, you're forfeiting your late game against uh, a Tinker as well as Anti-Mage. Essentially, the one, two of the best late game heroes in the entire game. Mm -hmm. So FY is essentially saying, you know what, we're going to try to four core you. He's going to become a core himself. And Lestrak, honestly, is one of the best late game uh, supports. And we're going to see a gank. Disruption is going to... Oh! Nice and quick. Quick, quick blink back. And now they reveal the fact that VG Gaming have rotated up towards the top lane looking for burning. We're still 15 minutes in and Burning is no closer to his Battle Fury apart from having like that health ring. It's like, he needs a lot more. He needs a hell of a lot more. He does, but I mean, I have a question posting to you, Toby. Okay. The gold graph right now is a 6,000 gold lead for, for Vici Gaming. They have a couple towers up, they have a couple kills up. But do you really feel that DK is actually in trouble? No, I, I really don't. When, when you have a Tinker as well as a Beastmaster together, you're always going to be able to make openings and you're always going to be able to hold the lines because you've got the intel to know when the fights are going to begin as long as the Beastmaster's looking around. Here it comes. And you've, and you've got your controller. Yeah, they're, they're, they're posturing on the top lane at the moment and Sylar is fake TPing in. But everything gets controlled by just the Tinker moving across the map. And then Undying, we cannot underestimate his importance during team fights. At least for the next 10 more minutes, right? Yeah. I, I think Undying is so important. Uh, after that, obviously, he's not going to be anywhere near as great. But at the same time, then you start adding Mass Serpent Wards into the team fights. And the Tinker, okay, that was a ballsy TP coming in from Mushi and Lanham. Well, he's able to back himself up because Fenrir is not close enough. These supports got themselves a really nice start because you've got Minus and because what have we got? We've got Tranquil as well, it's burned. They're nice, but there's no jump in initiation. There's no Blink Dagger on the SD to be that, that first jumping kind of guy. And who is that for VG? Is it just a five-man foursome on the front lines? Because Undying right now wins those engagements. Yeah, they don't really have a jump in. I, I guess it could be Profit. Profit could TP and activates BKB. Generally, Siler does go Orchid and BKB and just face tank. When he... Siler or Super's in trouble. Super comes up high ground, and he sees Lanham down. Ward is available, and Tinker TPing in. Already the Tannic Blink has been broken off here, and Einstein sides with Tutor. Him is live. Too low on life. The Profit ulti actually bounces through to kill him off. But Tinker, okay, Mushi cancels it. They're backing themselves up. This they is a big engagement play. for VG because they broke Tombstone. Tombstone's really a, a big part of the DK defense. I think they're going to lose tier 2 because of that. Agathon's on Super is going to make short work of this tower. And now that ROTK has got a decent level in terms of ward, it's going to also make Tinker a little bit more reserved in terms of where his positioning is. Everything on paper, DK looked like they would have had the superior team fight. But when VG Gaming are able to bait out these abilities separated from the rest of them, to have Tinker not being available and also caught in trees, uh, like you have. You basically catch DK out. There was no Man Serpent Wards. You lost that Shadow Shaman when he wasn't expecting it either. And now you're going to lose like another hero. Mushi's in the tree line. If that's, you know, they have no way of catching him out because he just sits in the trees and they can't blink themselves up. Uh, but yeah, you, you, if the combo is there for DK, they're really, really strong. If not, VG Game with single target pickoff, they're just brilliant. Yeah, it really comes down to. It really comes down to Mushi making a mistake or not. If he's not caught out, if he's not five back reserve, he should oh, top lane. Oh, goes on RTK. Burning he's got down. the mech. Got the... No. Go on, go on. He got the mech, so he's fine. But here comes Mushi. He's trying to burst everything down. It's going to be going on RTK, but here comes the blast. The script's going to hit. Super is trying to, try to retreat. They don't really have lockdown on the side of DK either after that Beastmaster roared. 
Burning got ganked up meanwhile on, the, on that top lane. It was the Purge being used as well as SD Disruption, and you just took away all of his mana and locked him in because he got a fresh Orchid over on Nature's Prophet, so he had nowhere to go up on that top lane. And that bottom lane, VG Gaming, they, they should be really lucky that they, that they pulled themselves out of that. As Lanham just walks straight past Fenrir. He's going to come back again, though. But with the haste rune, he's feeling pretty confident. He sp spotted out the SD quickly. There's just very aggressive wards being put down by Lanham. He might have to leave a Hawk behind as well now. They, they realize the push is coming. The tier 2 tower is the focus here of VG Gaming. They want to win this in 25 to 30 minutes. Use RTK's power to push. Well, they will have a mech to heal the creep wave if they want to use it like that. And they're holding on to it. They got one creep, that's all they need. No backdoor protection, which means they can just blast away at it. And with the Aghanim Scepter over on Super, but he's got the really good, he's got 2400 gold on this guy. If they really feel confident enough to push, he could even just rush the Refresher Orb this early on and just force out the lanes. I know the normal thing would be like, hey, buy yourself a BKB, but you still got Raw that's going to stop you, and you still got a lot of other problems which can go through that BKB. And Tinker, TP middle lane, again has to be cancelled by Mushi, as Slash is coming up high. He found Einstein's high. Where is Lork is going to go off right now? He's actually used it, but the Raw is going out on him. MMY, it's just a buff of Ward line. That's what he's trying to do in Super, actually, and he's topped up. The Centaur came out from the sidelines and actually held the Razor back. The neutrals interfering with VG Gaming's fight. Yeah, they would have uh, loved to came out with a couple of kills, but they forced out Master from and they're kind of right near the, uh, the enemy tier too. Maybe they could force a fight. But pushing against DK's high ground is really an issue. The fine balance that DK, uh, the Vici Gaming has to strike right now is keep on pressuring the map and making sure that Anti Mage does not run away with this game. If you want to check his farm right now, he's quite close to a, to a Battle Fairy, and once he does, his farm really accelerates. So Vici needs to keep on ganking Anti Mage. They have the weapons to do so. They have that Orchid on Silar. They have the Shadow Demon Roams. And they have to keep on striking tower. They have to really do a lot to make sure that DK doesn't want to rotate with the game. And DK, well, they're kind of playing defense for the next five, ten minutes. Mm -hmm. That's not really what they. Well, Mushi can't though. Mushi can't. Like defense in a way, yes, but they're gonna push the creepways back over the river. You're talking about Anti Mage getting himself a Battle Fury. If he doesn't have a jungle to farm, this Battle Fury is useless. He needs to have space created by the rest of his team. Yeah. Now, RTK sacrificing himself, that'll be one easy way they can make space. And it oh. could easily happen. Oh. Drops out the Nether Wall, but I Side Side is here. Triggers up his own ultimate, but then again, he's fighting both of them. Triggers up his Necro Books. Prophet Ultimate Lanham is really, really low right now, but the rocket's coming in. There's not enough damage to kill RTK. And while well, Lanham getting healed up by I Side Ice, the rest of VG Gaming is coming back oh. over. Oh, meanwhile, Way. ROTK came back in and just got nuked down. Surprised he didn't oh, leave that might cost him the death, though. The ground sprout, it's gonna hit, but he's on the high ground. Immediate tango out. That's the ground actually blocked up the rest of VG game, and they couldn't move up. MMY's got Master of Wards in four seconds time. He doesn't want to use him to try and survive here. But Super running after him with an Aghanim Scepter ulti, and he doesn't need his own tier 2 tower. They got your Master of Wards. He got the Hex over on Super, and the, sun, uh, the TP cancelled there by the Tinker. Well, the strike stun from FY would have ensured the death there. And Dyer's the Necro units and Treants are the ones farming attack. up the Mass Serpent Wards, so the money is still being claimed. Well, it seems like the Serpent Wards are farming up the Necros and Treant. <laughs> it's the other way. It looks like they're going to try to get a push off, but MMY is back alive. Tinker's still running Rampage in terms of where he is on the map, and Tinker slowly but silently, he, he's getting to a Hex. Once you get a Hex, you start to get off uh, a couple of killing potential. And I think that's where really DK is able to turn the tide of the battle. I'm still waiting, watching Super on this top lane. For a man who's got uh, 2,000 life points, when he sits at 500 in front of a Tinker with 3 points laser, 4 points rocket, well, he's got to be careful. Yeah. If that Hex is there too, you're right, the pickoff potential really goes through the roof because then you've got to hold time for you to rearm. So you can basically get two different waves of that rocket, the, the, the single target damage. Invisibility. Burning's finished the Battle Fury at least, so uh, he can try and enjoy this farm, but all he could do is just take one of the Ancients at the moment. Not even stacked up, so not the most efficient farming he's ever had. But crossing the river, maybe going to the Radiant side, maybe the best option for him. Just ca carry a TP scroll, push out that bottom lane as often as he can, try and bring down the tier 1 tower, and just make some space on the off lane of DK. Because VG Gaming won't give him any space in their own jungle, especially now as they're looking to go into the pit. Oh, back in the mid lane here, FY. Oh, oh, just... Lanham? Uh, he, he has gem, he's tall. Yeah, Lanham. he, he, he could have got the roar off. Yeah. They have bots. I'm not sure why they didn't go for it. There's VG Gaming. the hawk, he got killed off by the Field. Huge. 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 And I think Roche is going to be gone by then. 
Tombstone's gonna be on the high ground. It's not really spawning to the low ground just yet. Age is gonna get claimed. Tombstone is down, by the way. I'm not sure what Rishi realizes, but they can go for a push now. Uh, it's, I think it's still a little too early for that, man. You're going into March of the Sheens as well as Master Evan Wards. Even just that alone will be enough to stop you. Until they've got both their level 3 Necro books up, they may not be happy with this. And at this point, they do have one from Sila, but the one from Pogna is still missing. Is He's only got his level 1 at the moment. I hear you, Toby, but Vichy does not. Vichy's going in. I'm not sure about this, dude. I, I really don't think they can breach the high ground. They have two life on Super. They have a BKB. He's just going in. They're blasting it up. Here comes the high ground. Can DK hold it? He's going to clip immediately. Look at the burst, look at the march. The creep wave is gone. Yeah, the creep wave doesn't survive his push. It's super. Down the half. You got Nagus, it doesn't mean you have to use it. Lanham, he's got the roar, he lets it go and super's down. There goes your Aegis Immortal. They get rid of the Netherlord. Now the tower's taking some considerable damage, that's fine. But the creep wave is gone, your Aegis is gone. And both your Necro books have also been spent. You've got 10 seconds until level 3 Necro books are up for Scylla. But it may be a little bit too long, because again, March Machines begins, and you've still got Burning pushing a tier one down the top lane. Hex over an FY, MMY. That's a really aggressive mass serpent wants, but they've already got Siler up on the top lane. Burning is finding farming space, and they do not claim the mid racks. And they lost an Aegis. And they lost the Aegis. It really felt way too premature, that one. Like there's a tier, there's tier two towers up on the top lane, they can suffocate DK out. But what they've managed to do now is give a lot more space over to Burning, who's got his treads, he's got himself a blade, so we're looking at the mana style on the way as well. So all of these things are starting to arrive, and Lucci might better have a little bit more space, and maybe for once DK can claim a tower. I'm not sure whether they can suffocate DK out, because Mushi could teleport with impunity, there's very little cure that can stop him, Silar, with the, with the Orchid maybe, like catch him. But there's also AM you have to worry about. AM could farm his own jungle, he could farm in the enemy jungle. He's also starting to become an issue. Once he gets his Yasha, his farm rate will increase further again and uh, the Manta style afterwards. I think once Burning has his Manta, that's where they feel like they can actually push. Or start taking fights. Well, for now, it's the bottom lane where uh, we have our, our side up Mushi. Just adding more problems here for Super, forcing him back with the March of the Machines. And uh, Razor, for all the time we've been talking about like burning farming up, we still got the 13,000 net worth Razor, who did finish the BKB, he didn't go straight into the Refresher, but he's already got the Oblivion stuff on the way to that Refresher. So, it's coming. It's coming. And so is DK. The lane. He's teleporting right in the back of oh, DK. D this is the easiest game of their life. Beastmaster starts with the roar. coming in though, and Scylla, well, maybe with that Orchid, he could do something here, but he's already dead. Fuji comes in, the Mars Machines will arrive and soon. Got BKB, Fuji, he's gonna get out to Megchan. Trying to keep alive the Prophet Aldi, getting a double kill bouncing through them, and they move up to MMY. DK really cold with their pants down at the moment. And BG Gaming Mushi now doesn't have buyback. Mushi does not have buyback. He cannot die. He needs to defend. How will DK hold with four? They still have Mass Urban Ward. That's going to act as a secondary tower, but super. Look how early he drops them too, putting them behind the lines, and they just do whatever they can. Decay is gonna have to work really hard here from my side side, getting multiple units, but the melee ranks, the primary focus here. It's not the full necros, but it's enough. There goes your melee ranks in favor of VG Gaming. And they take the range of timing for VG to find Mushi without buyback, takes the easy racks, and now you're playing one racks up with the profit. Anti-Mage and, and Tinker are great defense, but that's just more pressure going uh, against DK. Can't ask for more if you're Vichy Gaming. More importantly, you've got the uh, level 3 Necro book over on the Pogna. So everything which I was looking for to reach high ground up against the full lineup of DK is now there. Yeah, also, Super is about to finish his Refresher. That's where the double lightning comes in. Yep. It's bit, actually, you got the recipe already too. Yeah. I mean, at a certain point in this game, Tinker's got to worry about killing himself. Because if he's marching endlessly, those Necrobooks, when they pop, 600 pure damage. What, so he just marched the machines and then TP back to base? Takes, takes the hit to the team? I, I don't know. I, I don't know. Like, there, there's nothing you can really do. Like, you can, in theory, get a BKB, but... Obviously, he doesn't have the gold or luxury or time to get that. Maybe and, just and, get and more he can't, health. He can't get the BKB. Like, Muchi is, is meant to be, like, the savior here of TK. He's the man that jumps out there and makes sure that SDL and Track have no part in this engagement at all. Yeah, I'm in no way suggesting that Muchi should get a BKB. I'm just saying he might die in, the, in these upcoming defenses. Yeah, just simply thanks to the Necrobooks, and that will suck for him.
and Burning is just watching this top lane. There's also a big smoke river coming out from VG. They're behind the tier two on the top lane, and they're just waiting for somebody to feel like they can be here and, and fight underneath the tower. But the rest of DK, they're actually south. Looking towards the tier one tower in the bottom lane, and can they finally 28 Radiant minutes in? It's, it's gonna be a trade-off though. They will take Dyer's their first tower, tower of attack. this game, Radiant's but they'll lose their tier two tower in the top lane, and Super is ready Dyer's to push it. Top tower has and here they come. Go. The Netherworld's already down. Ice Ice Ice, Ice the main man in the front lines. The first wave mark machines now begins from Rushi. The tombstone, the very back lines of VG game will have to go deep to find it, but with the mech already up, now that surfboard's also being dropped from DK. They're gonna try and hold the line even the tier 3 towers lost. Super, there goes your mech, bringing their life back up again, and Burning was considering a jump in. But with the amount of surfboard wards and tombstone down, they just let it go. And they can back themselves up. Super Salt is going to be on cooldown. They just take the tower. They take what they want. Yeah, Vici Gaming is working with much lower cooldown. The, the highest cooldown of their pushing spells is actually just Necro Book. And then you have Super coming in with this two ultimates. So I, I guess they could farm for like 50 more seconds and then go back. That's the time where Master Serpent Ward's not necessarily up yet. And you just take the racks. Or they could just farm it out and maybe go for a pick. But right now, with the mid racks down, Vici just bought themselves a ton more time. They could even go late game if they want. Maybe not. There's, there's no need to. There's no need to, yeah. That's that's the thing. And also, it's pretty dangerous to do that against Burning. Yeah. Burning's got his uh, mana now. But this, this doesn't really help him during the team fight. Like, he gets his mana off, and what is he really trying to escape from here? It's not more escape. It's, it's allowing him to actually blink to the back line and maybe focus on Pugna. I could see that, by the way, how Vichy's clumping up. A single mana void off of a Pugna, for example, or the Lestrak, you could just blow up the entire enemy team. But that also required that Undying to essentially throw himself into the team and, and draw some focus. So Lanham. There's the BTs coming in. That Hawk very quickly cancelled the TP on it. And the one Hawk is still hanging Radiant's around. Lanham needs these guys to stop moving attack. around so they can go invis. They can get some good intel. He's lost both his Hawks now. That vision very limited down. here for DK. And again, observable down here from VG inside the base. Watching all the rumors here for DK. Mars Machine to try and keep him out, but now the Lord Mushi. He's not looking too great, but this one is next to Mushi. It's almost down right now. Big charge will go. Soul Rip as well to keep him alive. Burning. There's your double all the up from Super and Burning. Evaporates underneath the Razor. The top rack is, is toast. There's going to be nothing left here after BG Gaming has finished with DK. Burning teleported around so the Courier never reached him. So the Manta style recipe and the Ultimorph died on the Courier. So no more Manta style for three minutes. I don't think they will get three minutes though. Here comes BG Gaming. They're thinking about obliterating the bottom. Or maybe not. Necrobooks are cooling down. They'll say, you know what? Let's wait for about 40 to 50 seconds, heal up, and then come back. They have the time, they have the luxury. And essentially, Anti Mage just threw 3,000 gold into the well mm -hmm. for a wish that is not going to come true for a long while. It's also a really smart move what BG Gaming are doing right now because they're backing up at around the potential spawn time of Roshan. They know if they lose a fight, if they overextend themselves into DK and DK are able to get the upper hand on them, they could potentially then lose Roshan as well. And now we'll get DK semi back inside this game. They're so far behind. The goal graph is almost reaching 20,000. The experience graph is reaching around 10,000, all in favor of VG Gaming. They cannot let DK have a single hope. So they can crush them here in game number one and take the uh, take the momentum into game number two. Yeah, at this point, it's all about split pushing. And should VG actually get to your base, then you just take a Hell Mary of a fight and try to, you know, one fight at a time, right? I, I think DK needs to win at least two to three fights in a row, such that to to basically repel Vici, because Vici's not going to You make it sound so easy. It's just so simple now, Lumi. I mean, that's that's what they got to do. Well, life's going to be really hard, man. FY's almost finished up a full site device. Uh, he just needs a Mystic Staff and he's there. You, you talk about going into a carrier the track, you basically got it. Yeah. And also, even like Sila, is, how's, he, how's he looking? Now, yeah, Sila can also afford a Scythe of Isis, if you, uh, not now, uh, in about maybe 15, 15, 1800 gold. He can also afford one. He could afford one if he wants to go for it and, and, and then push. Or basically, this 2k go is a secondary life, right? He could just buy back and teleport back in the fight. So that's yeah. essentially ages for him. I like the fact that Super picked out the Vitality Booster. Just say, give me all the item now that I can push with. And that's exactly what he's getting for, for himself and for the team. And Fuji is not making this easy for VG Gaming. And VG, is, VG Gaming have realized, hey, we only need one creep, all right? So yeah. 
Let's let the all quick roll. Comes out from Lanham. They go on Tyler on the top lane. They need to bring him down right now. The Orc goes over on Burning RTK. He came in with the men to keep him alive. Now the drain going and burning up the Cobra Five. It's all fucked up. Burning must bail out this one. This crowd will see him, but it cannot get the damage up fast up. Lanham also able to TP himself out right underneath the nose of Fenrir. The Fenrir has no clue because he was in the trees where it's safe. But that bought themselves time, which is all that matters for DK right now. Push the lane far up, push the mid lane, or at least try to push Mish out. This is where you really don't want to be ice, ice, ice. Cause Bottom lane. Oh, the Hex is already gone right now, and Super turns into fire. He's triggered out of there, Bushi. Bushi, he can't TP out. 55 seconds on the sideline. And an instant buyback has to come out. He's not even a force to buy. He needs to be on the front lines. There's no choice for him. He must be up and pushing up every outer lane, or else DK getting pushed from three different sides. Finally, he gets his bat, uh, Manta style back. The beauty of the resummon courier. So, the, the funny thing is, before the fight began, VG Gaming were preparing themselves before the push came on top lane. They were preparing themselves as five men to push down the bottom lane. Now, they were waiting for Roshan, who is up, and the trees are just sitting there, spectating. Uh, but they had super refresher orb off cooldown. I think that was the primary thing VG Game were waiting for. Once that's up, they saw you saw how quickly the top racks went down. Yeah. You just put super on the front lines, double refresher, and job is basically done. And as that was long going, as doesn't die. That was going through a massive reward and a tombstone. It's not like he wasn't putting up a fight. This time Bushi is actually able to TP in there. There's Sprout coming up from Sunday oh. in the vision and they jump up to Fenrir. Now he's gonna go down to burning at the moment. Oh, that's why the Ghost Scepter and as the disruption is buying some time for the rest of VG game to come micro Fenrir finally goes down but Lanham on 100 life points. He's trying to up RTK, drains it, that means the gem's also on the deck. No vision burning, he's stuck in the trees. It's not safe there, he's down. They got more support coming in too. FY looking towards Ice, Ice, Ice. Gets the stun off, they're battling under the map. So forth, making the great idea in the world. MMY locked inside the Sprout. They got a stun. They got enough damage. They got the damage. That's the way to answer it. MMY on the sidelines. They bring down the Undying Tombstone. They go through the Mass Serpent Wards. They can either finish Roshan right now or even consider pushing bottom lane. Looks like they're going to take the conservative approach, take the Roche, take the Aegis. And after that, that should give the Scythe to FY. That should give the, the Scythe, or he already got the Scythe. Uh, I'm talking about Scylar. And then that's also going to allow Super to finish his heart. This new wave of item is just simply too much for DK, I think. Agreed. Agreed. VG Gaming right now. It almost kind of feels like... Uh, <laughs> it doesn't really feel like it's over. They're just going to finish the job. The downside for him is the fact that Super It's 100 seconds off having Refresher. So he's not a powerhouse just yet. Mm -hmm. I also want to give props to, uh, to Captain Bamboo, the uh, courier from DK. It boldly went when no panda has gone before. Managed to grab that gem and pull it all the way back to base again. Nice. But at the same time, it's not as rich and uh, as well spoiled as the Radiant Courier. As VG Gaming just had a hard to live it over towards Super. So this is one hell of a tanky razor. 3.3k basically life points on this guy. Not to mention, okay, his 9 armor's not really that brilliant, but he's got the Aegis the Immortal up his sleeve, and with a double ulti, the light points is all he needs. Illusion. As Mushi tries to buy some more space. Bottom lane, double marches, that's all you can really do. Keep this lane pushed, pushed out as long as you possibly can. The bottom lane's like their only advantage, because they haven't lost the racks there. Well, you say advantage, but it's just uh, yeah, equal. Sorry, they're equal. Yeah. But, but they, can, they can find an advantage there, because they can push it out. They can't push the other lanes, but just march to the machines. What they can do is they can hold the other lanes, but they can't push it. Yeah, here, here comes possibly a gank. They're gonna, they're gonna see if they can bring down Super here. He's the primary man. No, you He's need to kill Siler first. Super <sighs> has two lives. You may, you may be able to kill him once, but that second line... Take a CP, and they found RTK instead. He got the BKB off before the roar, but he got mass up and more trapped up. They move over to Fenrir, two very quick kills again, though. Goes in to protect him, but they move to Sylar. Sylar evaporates. The ST, he blinks himself away, burning to his tail. One last hit will kill him off. Super, BKB as well as ultimate. It's only one, it's not the full refresher. So they're waiting it out. Decay one off from Ice Ice Ice. In comes Burning, looking at F5, draining at the mana. Super's ultimate, though, killing up at least one of the supports. That's the Shaman down, and oh maybe no, they got more. They're going Tinker. for FY. Tinker, he's dying to Super at the moment, but there goes Burning. Able to get the Shrek down. There's still a 4 for 2 trade, which is better than I think Dyer's anyone would have expected from DK. And why is Super? He's coming back out again. Burning will just chase him down with the Illusion Trap for a little bit of the matter, but they've got to get back. The tier 4 towers are currently under siege, and they do not have a Tinker to help defend this. 
They're very lucky that they were able to actually kill multiple people, including Silar. If Silar was able to stay alive, they would have been in huge trouble where the exterior buildings would have gone down on the top and bottom, or top and mid lane. But good fight here by DK, being able to take one. That's the, really the power of that Beastmaster Hawk, looking for those leaking fights, having the vision, and more importantly, having that vehicle for that Tinker to teleport in. They also got really lucky, the fact that our OTK got caught out so far out of position. Yeah. Vision is one part of it, but our OTK was just a little bit too far away from the rest of his team, and because of that, DK could capitalize. He was still really, really quick on that BKB. I mean, that's where really having a blink on the Beastmaster really helps, right? Just seeing a hero and then immediately isolating him out. Yep. Wasn't exactly the best fight for Vici Gaming, but not technically the worst. <laughs> so well, worst, will, worst will be 0-5 right now, and they'll be losing more towers. But to this point, they still only lost one tower in this entire game. And Vici Gaming, the prep is coming for the bottom. Now, they got Refresher, Aghanim's ulti up on Super, and they've actually already tricked up these Necro books a little bit earlier. So they won't have the po they won't have two waves of the Necro units available. And they're trying to wait out the way March machines, but obviously you can't wait it out forever. Now they come in super, he just walks in through the middle. And he just loops himself around. The Mass Earth wants to go and he breaks the line of DK. Mass Earth wants it down, but he's trying to protect Ice Ice Ice. He's just launched it straight. Super, where is it? They just go straight through him. He's just holding the line there. And that's where the bottom rank taking a fall. They end the Beastmaster back up again, but they have no one dying to help out. Even with Tinker there, they say it's not enough. GG, it's the call. BG Gaming will take game number one here at the best of three. Up against TK, and a one game away, one victory away from facing up against Evil Geniuses for the spot in the TI4 Grand Final. I felt despite how the game looked like it was a stomp, it was a really a fine balance. If Mushi didn't die in that mid gank, and remember when they backstabbed Siler, if they got a yep. clean kill, would have been a different game because he would have had buyback gold, he would actually extend the game much longer until Burning kicked in. But you make one mistake against a pushing strat, you lose.